Yeah. Jack, I said, should be in the England team a long time ago. But, yeah. And now everybody's saying, oh, he's not a bad player, is he? <laughs> so I was the original <laughs> fan. <laughs> Now, Neil, I imagine these are questions you may not have had before. Some of them silly, some of them serious, but this will get to know the man behind the manager. Now, Neil, we'll kick off with the first question. Stevie, you can go. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would you choose and why? What would I choose? Uh, my passion is cheese. I love cheese. <laughs> I love that it's a passion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just love different cheeses. What's your, uh, what's your go-to one? My blue cheese. I love uh, the Cornwall cheese, uh, you know, uh, the blue cheese. Is that a strong cheese? Yeah, it's nice. I love that with a, uh, with a cracker. Is that, is it, yeah, a proper stinky cheese. Yeah, it stinks. smells really bad, like, like sweaty socks. <laughs> you know, nice. but... But with a nice port, it's surprising what you can, how blends it, it blends in with the taste. <laughs> I bet you've been in a few dressing rooms that stink yeah. of blue cheese, haven't you? But yeah, I do. I mean, when I, when I was your age, you lot, I mean, I never, ever drank, you know, I mean, never had cheese and you, you didn't do anything. Port or, or wine, you know, it was unheard of. Mm. I mean, I didn't drink beer. All, all the young lads, all, when I was playing and teenager and uh, early 20s, they were all beer drinkers or lager drinkers. And, and I used to drink schooners of sweet sherry. Oh, wow. Uh, and I remember Graham Pugh at, at Barnsley when we used to go in the social club after the game. Whether we win, whether we won or lose, mm. we went in, me and Pugh, into the social club. They were all flat caps. They all looked the same at Barnsley. And, and we walked in. And, of course, if we'd lost, they'd give us a sticker. But we walked right through the tables to the bar. And same if we won, where everybody were happy. But we still did that. And they, they appreciated that. Some lads only went in if they won. <laughs> and I remember Pugh used to go to the bar deliberately and get himself a, a pint of beer and shout back to me in front of all these flat cap <laughs> Barnsley people, Warney, do you want a scone? Do you want a cherry in your sherry, Warney? <laughs> <laughs> And I used to cringe, and everybody used to say, sherry. Sorry, I don't, I don't like beer. Sorry, sorry about that. Do you embrace it now, Neil, your sherry? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, look, I, I like my sherry. Yeah. And, um, but in them days, you didn't, you know, you, the taste bud changes over the years. Red wine, I thought, was oh, atrocious at your age. Uh, mate, I'm still in that boat now. Like, yeah. Robbie's a big, a big wine, wine fan. He, I, think, I, think you get, I think you get in your 30s, 40s, yeah. you become a little bit more of a connoisseur. You know, mm. when you're your age, yeah, you just drink old, don't yeah. you? Really? <laughs> you know that I connoisseur <laughs> <laughs> okay, hit him with the next one, Robbie. What's your go-to karaoke song? Uh, your song, Elton John. Oh, oh. It's a little bit it's funny. funny. Oh, it's amazing. I love it. I like it. I love it. I do. I love Elton as well. I he, he was at Cardiff uh, a while ago when I was at Cardiff, and we went to the family. And I didn't even hear him. It, it, it's great to have Neil, one of my, you know, in the audience. I never even heard him. I couldn't, I ain't got my hearing aid in. <laughs> and, the, and the kids are shouting, he's talking about you, Dad. He's talking about you. <laughs> we're clapping, everyone were clapping. And I thought, what are they on, what they're on about? <laughs> oh, but I, I did go and see him after. Oh, uh, I'll tell you a quick story about him. Go on. When I was playing at all the shot, I was in my 20s. Um, I, there was a lad called Paddy Morrissey playing for us who played for Watford. And Elton had just started at Watford. Uh, not in a big way, but he was a big fan. And we went to, we played at Watford, and he, Paddy Morris said to me, uh, Neil, when, you, when we get to the game today at Watford, don't go back on the bus. I've got some, we've got some, I'll tell you later, but come back with me. So, all right, Paddy. So we had the game, and we drew, and then after the game, he says, come on, Wani, we'll, we'll go in the social club. And we'll go in the social club, and had, you know, a few drinks. And, and then all of a sudden, half past ten, about quarter past half ten, they closed the club. And Elton came in and had an hour on the piano oh. with all the lads, with the P Watford players and all that. Wow. And bloody made, honestly, amazing. And me and Paddy's there. And uh, I'll never forget it. So, of course, at Cardiff, I reminded him about it. I'm not sure he remembered, but uh, <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, I, I do, I think he's a great, you know, great ambassador. Stevie, when are you going to sort of raise your social profile so you can bring El Elton into this podcast? I've got no chance. I'll never be this man here. No, Neil, are you free every Thursday? To be a <laughs> <laughs> right, um, Neil, your team gets a penalty in the 90th minute to yes. win the FA Cup. Yes. You can have any player. You don't have to have managed them. Yep. It can be any player in world football to step up and take it. Who you have? Ivan Tony. Good shout. Absolutely. He, he seems absolutely, he's got no, he has got no fear. Hmm. or anything I'm not, I don't like his run up because he doesn't take many strides <laughs> but, but he knows exactly what he's doing and I don't know whether it's 20 odd out of 20 odd but well, I mean that's why I'd take him to the World Cup yeah 100% if they get a penalty shoot I'll get him on quick before the 
friendly I, shootout. I was listening to Talk Sport the other day, and I can't remember which presenter it was on there. Uh, it might have been Hawks being Jacobs or something, but they said that they interviewed... Who's the gaffer now for Brentford? The um, Yeah, um, yeah they Frank. In, yeah, Frank. Yeah. And Frank said a couple of years ago that he's the best penalty taker in the world, and they were a bit like, hmm, all right, well, Ivan yeah. Taylor... But then since then, like, he's just gone on to prove it. As Jack, a, I said Dan, Dan Byrne should be in the England team a long time ago, but yeah. and now everybody's saying, oh, he's not a bad player, is he, Dan Byrne? And all <laughs> So I was the original Dan Byrne fan. <laughs> <laughs> you know your football now, that's yeah. for sure. Okay, if the people closest to you had to describe you in three words, what words would they use? Um, kind. Uh, soft. And uh, what would the third word be? Uh, soft, kind, and um, erratic. Great words. Probably, yeah. yeah. Great words, yeah. I, I mean, I, I met Neil yesterday. I was lucky enough to go on your new podcast, Die yeah. for Three Points, and it, this man's everything you want him to be. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Ab- absolute legend. And a few others. <laughs> <laughs> right, Neil, what's the most pointless animal in the world? Now, there's a reason we asked you this. Yeah, we, yeah. we had Ian Holloway sat, sit in that chair as well, and we asked him, and we want to see, do football managers think the same when it comes to... Let's face he it. loves his cats, doesn't he, Ian? It, yeah. Mm. I think, mm. what's the most pointless animal? <laughs> I don't think there is one. I think animals are so important. Every one of them. I love, I love animals. I love insects. You know, living in Como, where I do, I see so many. And I tell you, you can have anything in the world and you can have all the money in the world. But when you sat at the bottom of the garden and I've, I've got a little pond at the bottom of the garden and I'm sat there and a kingfisher comes and lands on my fishing rod and talks to me. Ah, there's nothing, trust me, lads, there's nothing better than a, a kingfisher there. And I'm saying, are you going to stay there while I get my phone out, please? And I, I, please stay there. And I'm getting my phone out. Please stay there. And he lets me take a photograph of him. Oh, that's I amazing. mean, that is incredible. I just, you know, I love, I love nature. Yeah, and that's I, amazing. We've got um, uh, buzzards nesting in in the field as well and they're they're amazing creatures so we're lucky in Cornwall because we are you know uh, and yet when you look even in town in the big city like the big smoke here you um, there, there are things around that you don't notice when I was at uh, Beckenham we used to get at night time screams and I used to think somebody's captured a baby and it was a fox mm. it was the foxes at Beckenham and they used to scream they're at noisy aren't to, they oh my god we used to open the windows I said, so Danny, has somebody got a child out there or what? It was quite frightening. Yeah. But, you know, it was uh, it is amazing how, how much wildlife there is everywhere. And let me tell you the famous story. Yeah, when I was at QPR, uh, I used to drive in my bike, electric bike, in, in Richmond Park. And he used to, I used to go around and drive and talking and all that lot. And I'd drive off the track and, my, and I'd come up against this tree, big, big bushes and all that. All of a sudden, this stag come out from behind, oh. lifted his face up, and he looked at me, and he froze, and I froze. And I says to him, well, would you play him or not on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> and I, he nodded, I'm swearing on it, he nodded, and I played him. <laughs> so so uh, all my tactics aren't all natural. Yeah. <laughs> I get help. Well, Ian Holloway said kangaroo. <laughs> he said that's the most pointless animal. Um, yeah, he listened. I who, 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 who say not with Ian, really. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with Ian. <laughs> well, from the natural world to the supernatural. Yeah, Neil Warnock. Do you believe in aliens? I think there's got to be life in outer space somewhere. It's too big an area mm. for there not to be any life. Me, um, and we've had we've had so many sightings over the years and what have you. I'm not sure they're aliens uh, like we think they are. I think it'd be something um, that we've not even come across really. Mm. Um, but there's got to be life of some sort because it's just the, the planet and everything. It's so, so vast and we are such a small part when you look around Yeah. and I do, I do, I, like, I do like the stars and things like that. I do enjoy looking up at the stars and I love my plow only because it's only one I can find <laughs> and the plow I can tell everybody that, that's the plow yeah, is that the, is that yeah the, the seven right yeah right. one two three four five six and square yeah so I always say that's the plow and everybody thinks I'm clever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then to finish off the get to know questions you're having a nice chilled Saturday night in what's your go-to takeaway uh it would be special fried rice um with um, some king prawn for young, not not king prawn for young, king prawns uh, on that special fried rice. Are you with me? I like yeah. king prawn for young, mm. and I'd cut that up and put it on the special fried rice. I like me prawns with 
the special fried rice, if I'm honest. I can't do prawns. I wonder if that's a thing yeah. that potentially I'll get into in later yeah. life as well. A bit like the cheese, a bit like the wine. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah I think seafood. I mean, I'm, 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 from, I'm from Cornwall and I have a place a place called Lou. L O O E, not a toilet. It's right. a, you know the loop, <laughs> and it's a fabulous place. And of course, the fresh stuff comes in every night off the trawlers and that. Mm -hmm. So you get you get you know they, when you taste fish fresh from the trawlers, it's entirely different to what you taste in the you know mm -hmm. up here in the London. Although a lot of London restaurants now get it straight from loo and places like that. Yeah, and it's shipped straight up on the same night, and it's all fresh in the and it it tastes. I mean, the fish food is um, unbelievable now, but I I do I do like prawns fresh. I wish I could do seafood because there's so much of it. Yeah, you said you so enjoyed good. it when you were away because you got it fresh. Yeah, I was in Jamaica once, and I got um I got like a they went out on the boat and caught the fish there with yeah. you, and then they cooked it later that night. It just tasted like chicken. It like. does, uh, and you have it you have it in a little pl plastic not plastic thing, don't you? In, yeah. in Jamaican places like that, and and it is just lovely. I, I love the mussels and cockles and that me so we had rob, we, becker, rob the becker comedian in here and, yeah. and he brought us loads loads of them i, I, I struggled i, I mean my kids, been... my kids aren't overly keen right if i'm honest <laughs> so it, it might be another thing like me and you yeah. with the wine What's oysters the, what? oysters are my favorite oh really yeah i love oyster oyster oh you're clever oh, so i'm not <laughs> <laughs> oh he's got more hype what does he think he is oyster <laughs> can't believe you turned on me now we were bonding fire <laughs> i've heard it all now <laughs> I'm from Sheffield. If I told everybody I'd, I, I ate oysters. <laughs> You're drinking sherry in the working men's club. I know, but... You can have an oyster with that. Bloody <laughs> oyster. Robbie Knox and Warlock having a scrap early on. Anyhow, go on, carry on. <laughs> Love it.